afternoon everyone, um, it's Joshua and I'm bringing you the uh, third game in the installment of uh, Joshua Talks Through uh, games he's made and how he made them. Um, and as of next week we'll go back to your regular schedule of um, viewers uh, requested tutorials. So this one is called Enrich That Transaction, uh, it's available on itch, I'll link in the description. Um, and basically I made this for a work thing. I say I made this for a work thing, um, we're having an internal event and I decided rather than just making an A1 poster I wanted to make a game. So uh, this is the game. Um, wh what does enrich mean? What is the transaction? What are the shapes? What does all have to do with it? Uh, basically it's all kind of artistic, fluffy muffy, um, but I basically wanted to make a game and I found a reason to make it on work time. Um, and so this is the game. Shapes come down, you um, tap the shape when it's in the center, um, if you tap it early, or if you tap it exactly right, you get a little spark, but otherwise, um, you know, they fly off. Um, yeah, the game's meant to be a metaphor on, like, pulling data together, etc. I basically wanted to make a game, and it went down well. And the game speeds up, and if you start to miss them, the game speeds death, slows, slows down as a way to help you get back into it. And uh, the screen color changes, so you know that it will start to change to red once you're in the real low health. Um, and as you uh, enrich transactions, you slowly regain health. Um, and yeah, the game went down well on the day. Um, most good scores were in about the 300s. Oh, and yes, then you've got game over with uh, a selection of uh, assorted emojis to let you know that you lost. Cool. Um, yeah, the game went down well. Um, my personal best score is somewhere around the 700 to 900 range. On the day, the best score, like from someone who just picked it up, was around 600, and the worst score uh, was about 80. Um, so yeah, that went down well, and as always, you'll find the uh, files to this um, in GitHub. So let's get into it. Um, so you'll see that everything is contained in two scenes, Splash and Game, and two behaviors, Game and Splash. Um, you'll also note there are literally no event sheet events. Everything is in behaviors. Um, and uh, I found this helped me. Um, this is kind of what I enjoy working with. So uh, the point of the splash screen is to display text and a button pops up and all the text sort of wobbles around um, and I was quite proud about how I worked out how to do that. Um, so I created a behavior called wobbler uh, when it's created. So wobbler uh, has a property called shake speed um, and it's just a number and when it's created it basically sets that to a random float. So float is uh, it's Part of me. It's an object that's not an integer, so 2.1, 2.8, 3.6. Um, you know, it's it's not a straight one, two, three. So it sets it to a random one between two and four, and then um, so do step post events. Basically, that means every frame. So every frame of the game, do this. Rotate the object towards. Um, let's break this down in a in a text editor because I realize it is. Um, going to be a little difficult. Actually no, let's just, I haven't prepared it, let's just talk through it. So the key part about this is the word sign and time from start. So sign, I don't know if you're, if, if you're aware of it, uh, good, if you're not, um, you should google it. Um, basically what sign does is it's a, um, it's a curve and it starts at zero and it goes to one um, and then it goes back to zero. And time from start, well, that's a number of seconds. And the effect of that, if I, if I actually just uh, copy all of this, I can start deleting stuff. So the effect of all of the, the effect of sign time from start is that um, it will constantly change the angle. So you can see that um, with just sign and time from start, each thing is slowly rotating forwards and backwards. Now it's rotating all at the same rate and it's not rotating very far. Um, so if we do, if we want to sort of amplify the rotation, we can times it by two. So, you know, rather than rotating from zero to one, or uh, sorry, from between one and minus one, it will now retreat between two and minus two. So that's sort of how we get like the nice big sort of sweeping movements. Um, how do we speed it up? Or how do we make it happen faster? Because time from start ticks on in seconds. Well, that's when we add the last bit back in. We add the object, the object property shake speed. 
And remember, that's a random slope between 2 and 4. And I just chose those numbers because they seem good. Um, and what that does is it speeds up, it speeds it up, and it speeds it up differently for each object. So, for example, uh, let me check if uh, this is a. Uh, no, it's not. It's all hidden. So, for example, if instead of 2 for 4, I said uh, 3 to 8, um, you'll notice that everything's going to move way faster. There you go. Um, and so that's literally just a numbers game to play with. Um, I was quite happy to find that out because uh, it's a nice single action way of like having something that looks, uh, having a nice animation. Um, so just to clarify, sine means it's a number that rotates between 1 and minus 1, times it by 2 makes the amplitude, makes the movements bigger, and then times in times by st time from start, it makes it happen faster. And yeah, begin game, it's uh, a small timer that increases the size of it once it gets to a second, and then when you touch it, it goes to this game scene. Cool. On to the meat of it. The game scene. What are we looking at? Once again, oh, there are a couple of events here. Um, they could all be moved into it. it I could have sworn I put them into a no. I could put them into an initialization object, um, like I've done in pre other projects. Uh, but yeah, just I use the linked objects manager, so I need to instantiate it, and then I just hide the game over layer. Um, so what's going on here? So we've got a bunch of different things. What is this white background? Well, it changes its size. If we go to the game, sorry, not size, color. If we go to the background object, so when it's created. Uh, you set um, the background object has uh, these are all visible in editor, so I should probably just show it in editor. Um, so it has a couple of properties. There, um, the help in this game is called data quality because it's thematic. Go with it. And I've got three colors: high data quality, medium data quality, and low data quality. And I've got a couple of numbers that say, you know, if your health is above 80, show high; if your health is above 40, show medium; and if your health is below 40, show low. Um, so that's what those numbers mean. And that's where it that's where it decides uh, what colors to change to. And all it's doing is uh, it's um, every frame it checks what the data quality is, and it um, it sets a property on itself, and then it basically tweens the color. Um, there is a uh, there is a tween behavior and a, a method called add, co add color tween object color tween, and you basically say tween to this color over this time, um, and so that's how you get the nice little fade. So that's what it's doing, and it's just white for default because, well, it, it changes color as soon as the game starts. Um, score and transactions per second, um, there's not really much to say on these. They, all they do is every frame they just change their text depending on how fast, you know, what the score is or how fast transactions are coming. Um, the most important point is probably this, this little uh, cross that I call pivot point. What happens is that pivot point uh, basically controls the game. Um, it let me let me see if I can demonstrate what it does. Uh, pivot point on created. Okay, let's not hide it for now. And I'm gonna I'm actually gonna pull it slightly down. So what pivot point does is it rotates and it rotates at the speed that's been set to, and every certain number of angles. Um, er, Every time it uh, rotates a certain amount of angles, it generates a new object. It also handles when it should speed up, it also handles when it should slow down. And so it's basically the heart and brain of everything. Cool, let me add this back. So the way Pivot Point works is um, there, inside of, um, there's a couple of uh, conditions here. So should you, should you spawn a transaction, um, that's what I call the shapes. And basically, you do some math to decide if you've rotated far enough. Um, and the way you know you've rotated far enough is there's uh, a bunch of fields which... Um, the, the main ones was like, you know, where, what was the last angle when it, the transaction was spawned? And uh, there's a scene property that asks, uh, how many transactions should be visible? So, you know, between scene properties, um, like, you know, how many transactions per second, why is it a number five? Um, okay, well, get to all of that in a second. 
Uh, but basically, between scene properties, um, this, decide, this condition decides uh, should uh, a new transaction be spawned. Um, this does the math to work out whether if the player has enriched a certain number of transactions successfully, then it speeds up, and if the player has missed uh, a certain number of transactions, then it starts to slow down. Um, and basically, it's uh, as it says, like um, if if tran, um, you know if transactions should be speed up, you do some maths, you speed stuff up, and you spawn transactions. Um, and transactions have their have their own kind of logic um, that give themselves a, a shake. Um, and that shake is literally identical to um, what I sh showed you in the setup screen. There's code about how it rotates around the pivot point um, and whether or not it should enrich or super enrich. And super enrich is literally that like nice sparkle of gold um, with a, a particle limiter. Um, and all of the functions for how to do that are here. Um, but let's just go back to a, a nice little gotcha. Why is transactions per second 5 here when when I press play it says 0 0.5 there? And you know when you look at the pivot point, you see, well, what is going on here? How comes when you want to speed up transactions, you times it by 10, you add a number to it, then you divide it by 10? What, what's up with that? Well, what's up with that? I'll tell you. What's up for that is computers don't like base 10. So ignore the game that's going on. I'm going to open up the console, and we're going to look at this console. Because remember, this is a JavaScript thing. Um, what would you expect to happen if I type 0 0.5 plus 0 0.2? Would you, if your answer was saying 0 0.7, well, you're right here. What if I said 7, 0 0.7 plus 0 0.2? What would you expect to see? The answer is 0.9. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Does that look like 0.92? No, it does not. There's a good Tom Scott video. If you Google, if you just go to YouTube and type Tom Scott um, fractions or something like that, um, he basically does a video explaining why computers struggle to think in base 10 and why um, seemingly simple arithmetic comes up as weird numbers. Um, but the too long, the TLDR, too long don't read, didn't read, is that rather than doing 0 0.7 plus 0 0.2, if you can do 7 plus 2, and you can divide that by 10, that's how you get your number. Um, so basically, in order to get around weird computer maths, we make all the numbers integers by times them by 10, we do our maths on them, so adding, subtracting, dividing, and then we divide it by 10 to get the numbers the, the numbers that we want to get. Um, yeah, that's generally it. There's buttons, there's a button hitbox, because... <clears throat> oh yeah, the way that buttons work is that it's all a single shape, um, but there's four different animations there, and um, same for transactions, and basically that's how you just decide. So everything is the same object, you know, all the transactions are the same object, but they just have a different sprite. So, so too with game over emoji, there's uh, way too many options that it needs to be <clears throat> in order for it to work. And then there's a couple of particle emitters uh, that do their things. So if I press play, we should see a sparkle of... Oh. And let's try loading it again. Ta-da! There. Small little sparkle. Um, did not mean to delete that. Cool. Um, so that should be good. Um, please feel free to download the project, play the game. Uh, it was fun to make. Um, it was a nice exercise because most of it came together in a day and then I sort of tweaked it based off user testing over a week. Um, over the rest of the week. It was fun to watch people play. I think in the future I might turn it into some kind of rhythm game because the general premise is people get the game and they like playing it, but um, they go, well, what's the point? You know, why, why do I want to keep going until the game eventually makes me lose? Um, so maybe it'd be fun to turn into like a real Guitar Hero style game with like rhythms and like um, you're playing along to music and basically you're trying to get to the end of the song. That's the challenge rather than how far can you get till you die. Anyway, that's been all for me now. Thank you so much for watching. Please leave uh, comments, thoughts, feedbacks, and suggestions for future videos.
and I will see y'all later.